Hi, this is Asha from Skate Fresh, bringing you the first in a very special set of three videos on the oh so very important art of stopping. In this video and the others in this series, I'll be actually teaching you some new stopping methods and discussing some common problems and issues with those stops. We'll be looking at stops for different ability levels as well as methods that work for almost everyone. We'll also be discussing some pros and cons of different stops and also looking at the very important heel brake debate. I wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you who took part in the recent stopping survey I sent out. I wanted to know what kind of stops you were using, what were the main issues and problems with those stops, and which stops are on your wish list. So I've been doing that kind of research with my students in class for years, but it was really great to get so many responses from so many of you all around the world. So thank you so much for that. I'll be telling you a bit about the results from the survey later on. What became apparent from the stopping survey is that stopping really is a major concern for many of you out there, and so it should be. At whatever ability level you're at, if you can't stop well and efficiently, then you're a potential danger not only to yourself, but to anyone else who happens to be near you when you're trying to stop. We've all seen or been that person who's out of control and can't stop. After that, when you're out of control, uh, you know, you're trying to stop, you're out of control, after that point, it's really only a matter of luck as to whether you fall or hit something. And uh, I've heard of many awful accidents that have come from bad stopping. Someone I know even broke both wrists when their T-spot spun them into a wall. Okay, so that's fairly extreme, but I have heard of many, many nasty things happening on bad stops. So when you do have a bad stop, a failed stop can result in, you know, minimum falling, getting injured, but the also other unfortunate thing is collision with other people, so pedestrians, other skaters, cyclists. None of this is good for anyone involved. It's fundamentally the worst thing about skating, the potential to really screw it up and get hurt, and nowhere is this more the case than with stopping. Stopping skills are also technically more difficult than all the other skills to learn and master. So I really think the best thing you can be doing is regularly topping up your stopping skills and increasing their ability to do them at higher speeds. So one astonishing result from the stopping survey is the massive, almost overwhelming disregard for the heel brake that I not only see in real life in all countries, but also a huge percentage of you reported to not wearing a heel brake despite not having a selection of other viable stops in your toolkit. Certified instructors and those with ICP seem to be the few people advocating the use of the heel brake publicly. The vast majority of skaters out there who skate regularly are intermediate level skaters using a T-stop and no other brake without a heel brake. So relying on just a T-stop and having no other stop available to you and no heel brake is a bit like having a bicycle, removing the brakes and scraping both feet on the floor in order to stop. So what would you really think if you saw a bicycle doing that? In fact, what would you think if you saw a bicycle scraping just one foot? Well, that is the T-stop, and uh, I think the T-stop is a good and useful stop to have in your repertoire, but I do believe it should not be your only stop. If it is, you're going to be seriously debilitated in emergencies and possibly downhill situations. So I think the T-stop is a great stop, don't get me wrong, but I do think it should be called the T-slowdown because using it in emergencies can be pretty tricky and it will wear out your wheels. So when you need to stop definitively and properly, I suggest you think seriously about acquiring some additional stops, such as the lunge stop and the power slide, both of which I use all the time. So you need to ask the following questions of each of your stops. Does it work in an emergency situation and can you do that? Does it work on a downhill slope and can you do that? And finally, what's the maximum speed you can do each of the stops in your repertoire? This is hugely important information to have about yourself, but you're only going to get this if you take a very objective look at your current stopping methods and then test them in safe situations first. If you can't do a T-stop at medium high speed without spinning, for example, then you shouldn't be skating at medium high speed unless you can guarantee that you won't need to stop. And if you're skating outdoors, that is impossible to guarantee. I've spent many, many hours in my 15 year career as a skating instructor teaching people to perfect their stops. And I did this mainly by working through a guided set of training exercises that builds each new part of the stop sequentially. 
Many of the exercises that I use in teaching you stops seem to be really simple, but actually they often involve a complex mix of both agility, balance and the coordination of putting several things together at once. Stops are complex and as such I've developed some great teaching sequences that I want to be able to share with you soon. Imagine a set of exercises which if practiced regularly would result in you learning and then mastering a completely new stopping method. At whatever ability level you are currently at, when you can stop well, i.e. where you intended to stop, you will gain so much confidence. Then you'll begin to experience a feeling of relief that will take an effect in your body as less tension and anxiety. The majority of new skaters have a huge amount of tension in their bodies when they skate, which isn't actually useful for their skating technique. It creates a lot of straight legs and back pain. When your body knows you can stop at a certain speed, it will begin to relax until you surpass that speed, and then the tension can return. This stiffness and tension reduces your ability to stop well. It's a vicious circle. When you can stop well, everything else in your skating opens up, and you begin to make real progress much faster. I've heard the heel break be bullied and called many names. I've heard it being called uncool, unsafe, and even dangerous. So um, if you think that the heel break is dangerous because you might clip it as you cross over, it means there's something wrong with your crossover. So please don't use that as an excuse. So most of the people who are branding these names of the heel break are failing to realize one thing, and that is that if a skater doesn't have several good alternative stopping methods, then they're risking falling, injury, um, collisions with other people, and they're risking their skating not developing and getting absolutely no fitness from their skating whatsoever. So it really is not very good advice. Removing your heel brake could be the worst thing you ever did, in my opinion. Imagine a situation where you stop really well using the heel brake right in front of a child who just pulled out. Everyone in that situation is going to be impressed by your ability to stop. Okay, so imagine that situation again. Child pulls out, skater does a great heel brake stop. Do you really think that skater should be branded as uncool? Because the fact is, it's your ability to stop well that really matters and not which method you use. But I do think that the heel brake stop is the best method I know for new learners to gain control of their skates and improve well. Use stopping methods that are appropriate for your ability level and speed. And please, let's stop trying to convince new learners to remove their brakes. If you had a friend with a brand new bicycle, would you be being a great friend if you just removed the brakes? Okay, I've said enough about the heel brake. Um, I've said my bit. So, that forward power slide's not one of my best stops. Uh, my internal hip rotation isn't great, despite all the yoga that I do. So I tend to choose other stops over that one. But I know many people who love the forward power slide and use it regularly. So that kind of assessment you need to be doing with your own stops. When you can skate well, stopping down hills will not be a problem and you'll be able to literally skate anywhere. Not being able to safely navigate a downhill slope will seriously restrict where you can skate and how many places you can enjoy. The problem with slopes is this, they appear either invisible or just like a very gentle slope. But the problem is that the acceleration we can produce on skates gets very fast very quickly and this often catches many people out. So I've spent a lot of hours looking at stops, talking about stops, weighing up the pros and cons of different stops and helping my clients achieve the stops that they want. The Skate Fresh, Skate Well e-training manuals that I'll be releasing soon are the results of all those years of experimentation, trying things out and seeing what works with pretty much everyone. Okay, it is time for me to teach you a new stop. It is far too hot for me just to be standing in the sun talking. It's about 40 degrees today, so uh, please excuse my shininess. So the stop I'm going to teach you today is called the inverted stepping plow. And it's most commonly used by speed skaters or street skaters who don't have brakes. However, this is also a great stop for beginner level skaters. Notice how the stop begins in a wide A-frame position where you then shift your weight from skate to skate while gently inverting each foot. The angle of inversion is everything here and getting it wrong, i.e. too much inversion, is not advisable. So practice this at low speeds first and only increase your speed slowly. So begin statically reminding yourself or learning the A-frame. So step your feet wider than your shoulders, your skates are on the inside edges with your knees 
down and forwards. Hands in front of you, there's your A-frame. Now make sure you can do that rolling. Always begin the A-frame from a good, ready position, both skates side by side. Gently allow the skates to roll into the A-frame and push your knees forwards and inwards to create the inside edges. Make sure your weight is 50% on each skate. Notice the knee bend throughout the A-frame and on each stepping knee. The next stage is to start shifting your weight sideways in a quick tempo until you can lift each skate slightly off the ground. You must pay close attention to the parallelness of your skates. If you create any slight open-toed V-shape, you will accelerate, and that's not what you want here. Keep both skates parallel as you learn and master the shift and lift. Stay low on your knees and don't bob up and down. Now the final stage is to slightly invert both skates into an inverted V-shape, toes very slightly inwards, and keep shifting and lifting. Notice how each time I lift my skate off the ground, I step it slightly outwards, laterally sideways, and that allows the inverted V to roll inwards, slowing you down. The trick is to begin with only a slight inverted V-shape, and as you slow down a bit, you can then increase the amount your toes go in, which will make you stop quicker. Obviously, you don't want to suddenly whack your toes in going, really fast, so be very subtle here. Once you've mastered a new stop on the flat, try it out on a gentle slope. First, just control your speed down the slope. Then, challenge yourself to actually stop on the slope. Then, go and find a slightly steeper slope and repeat that process. In the next video, I'll be teaching you another useful stop. This one appeared somewhere in this video. So, the stop I'll be teaching you is often used in combination with other stops because it very efficiently kills about 50% of your speed. So I look forward to sharing that one with you. In the next video I will also be talking about some pros and cons of different stops and I will also show you what are the absolute minimum stops that I think each level should be aiming for. So look out for that one in the next few days. I really hope you take seriously the need to learn and master new stopping skills. Everything in your skating relies on you being able to stop well and when you want to, and that includes your safety as well as your ability to skate fast and gain fitness from your skating. So really, it all begins with stopping. And I hope these videos have kind of trained your, trained your brain yeah, and got you into dedicating some time to making your stopping better. And I really impress on you um, the need to do that. Learning to stop is not easy and I really hope that these videos are going to help. So look out for the next two in the series. So once again it's time for me to get out of this oven and say thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.